Hello, this is L.A. Powers for 410 TV out of Dallas, Texas, and today we're interviewing the DeWitt. Thank you for joining us today. What brings you to Dallas? Thank you for having me. First of all, L.A., I appreciate it. Um, I am here, um, well, I was here for a show last night uh, at the Manhattan Club. Um, DJ Cali, um, local uh, DJ here, well-known, invited me out to perform, and I'm here. You're here in Dallas. One of the things you did, I understand, is a line dance song. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, I love line dancing. <laughs> I didn't realize there was such a huge community of uh, line dancers out there. I mean, from city to city, from state to state, there is a huge uh, community, and I think it's it's too huge to be quiet. Yes, very good. <laughs> it's like a, 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 a well-kept secret. Right. So uh, I wanted to do something to, to uh, represent uh, line dancing and to just represent the community and, and to be a part of the community. Um, and like I said, it's obvious to me with, you know, with a dance background, it's obvious that I would, you know, be drawn to uh, to this. So the song is called, um, it's called The Stepping Dance. The Stepping Dance. And it's actually a remix of an uh, original song I had called Stepping. Uh, two years ago, I uh, released, in 2015, I released a song called Stepping. And um, uh, got good reviews, but uh, I, I decided I want to remix it and actually... Uh, Put a dance to it, and um, you know, just uh, let the community see it. And um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just so thankful. Uh, I met this brother here locally, Isha. <laughs> you may know him. <laughs> um, I actually just uh, kind of went on a, a YouTube search. You know, just, just I'm like, there has to be a, a community in Dallas of dancers and um, typed in, you know, line dancing, Dallas, Texas, and of course, 410 line dancers and 410 TV and everything just popped up everywhere. Boom, 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 boom. I was like, okay, I have to get in touch with Isha. So I uh, shot him an email, you know, just, just, just to put it out there, see what happens. And sure enough, he responded to the email and um, wow, I hope you get a chance to see what we created um, last night at the Manhattan Club. It was amazing. Right. Yes, it was amazing. And the turnout was really nice. I was really impressed with the whole nine yards. But the, uh, the dance is really, really nice. And did you choreograph that yourself? I created the dance. I choreographed the dance. Um, I just wanted it to be fun. I wasn't thinking, you know, intricacy or anything like that. I just wanted it to be a dance where everybody can get on the floor and have a good time. You know, step to the left, step to the right, which is traditional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, I just kind of wanted a little, just some, just a couple of little twists and turns in there, and just, um, just have fun with it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Now, what is your background? Uh. My background is in dance, mainly. Um, there's a story behind it. I mean, I've always knew I wanted to do something in show business or be in show business. So um, after a little college, um, I decided to move to New York City. And um, I had no plan, no idea, just a young guy from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who wanted to do something big. So um, I moved to the um, big city uh, with an uncle who told me, hey, sleep on, sleep on my couch. You know, stay here a couple of weeks and you'll figure out what you're going to do. So uh, a couple of weeks ended up being close to 20 years <laughs> in the New York City area. And uh, uh, my main background has been in dance. Uh, I started just taking dance classes and um, all kind of um, different um, lessons, you know, in, in dance and just, just wanted to learn as much as I could. And uh, one of my dance instructors at that time, well-known uh, instructor, uh, referred me over to uh, um, an artist who was just getting uh, signed and getting started at that time, uh, which was named uh, Joe, R&B artist Joe, well, um, <clears throat> who was signed with Jive Records at the time. And uh, they, they just needed a dancer, just a dancer that can come in and pick up the steps and 
um, go on tour in a matter of a couple of days. And uh, she referred me, and uh, long story short, I started um, dancing and working with uh, Joe, which ended up uh, turning into a choreographer gig. Um, and I worked with uh, him probably about uh, three three of his uh, best CDs. Right. And uh, we toured, just toured international. Uh, because of that brother, I was able to uh, tour and see places I've never seen. Japan and um, Paris, France, and, um, uh, Australia, and just you name it, just all over the world. So it, 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 was, a, it was a great opportunity. So, um, you know, I started early on just um, being well-versed in dance and so on and so forth. And, I kept it with me my entire career. Okay. Now, but you also sing as well, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, I used to find myself in class um, just growing up, just supposed to be doing school lessons, but I'm, I'm writing songs and just, you know, just dreaming about the future, as I'm sure a lot of young people do. So, um, like I said, I always knew I wanted to do something in show business. So, I mean, uh, so I wrote and uh, I sung as well. And, um, Getting back to the Joe situation and the touring, mm -hmm. um, he, uh, uh, one of his background vocalists couldn't make it to a show. We, we had a big show coming up at um, the Tonight Show. Actually, at that time, Jay Leno was the uh, host. And um, he came to me and he said, well, we're not going to use the dancers uh, this show. And I'm like, okay, bummer. I can't go to L.A. He said, oh, you're going. I need you to sing. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> so um, I became his background vocalist uh, for um, well-known song I Wanna Know and uh, we toured and like I said we, we, we performed that uh, regularly so uh, I have that experience as well and I'm, I'm appreciative of that all of that has built me to what I'm doing now. Well you're just really multifaceted. And I understand your mom it, it was an it's inspiration to you now is that correct? Um. <laughs> She is, um, and she will always be an inspiration to me. And um, I haven't talked about my mom um, a lot. And um, it's very difficult, you know, when you, when you lose um, a parent, but especially your mom. Um, and she's just been, um, uh, what do you say? She's just been probably, I would probably say, the one that has been um, in my corner and she may not have always agreed yes. with my you know decisions <laughs> but she um, she defines unconditional for me and um, it's who I am today and I, I, I definitely appreciate that so um, uh, I lost her uh, to cancer two years ago, but it feels like last night. So, um, still dealing with that, but uh, music helps me get through it. And it, it um, you know, I just, the message is um, that you can still accomplish anything and, and um, pursue your dreams um, and use that inspiration and you know and use I want to use her loss for inspiration to just continue doing what I'm doing because that's what that's what she will want. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You yourself have been an inspiration because you've been through a lot on your own. Tell us about that. Now you're really getting deep. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> because I absolutely haven't spoke to anyone about this and um uh, um I, I applaud you, you know, for asking these questions because uh, a lot of people just don't read, you know. It, it's a lot of that is written in my uh, bio. You know, if you if you look me up, you'll see uh, some information. And I, I've just been vocal about it from day one, but no one has ever asked me. And uh, I appreciate um, 410 TV, and I appreciate you for you know being willing to let me go there <clears throat> but uh at the risk of being choked up <laughs> um i um i had renal failure uh about eight years ago and uh, was doing fine was doing fine and did just you know one one weekend i, I was home uh, visiting 
um, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, visiting my mom. And, um, you know, she was making my favorite meal, lasagna. All right. And um, I just didn't eat it. I didn't have an appetite. So she knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. So that whole weekend, I had no appetite. And then I just started feeling sick and just got to the point where I was literally... I had to drag on the floor to her room, knock on her door, tell her to call 911. Oh. So I, I had total renal failure. And uh, when you when you have total renal failure, you have to do some type of emergency procedure, and, uh, which was uh, dialysis treatments. So um, I've been um, uh, receiving treatments for probably close to eight, um, actually a little long, uh, well, close to eight years now. And uh, it's a it's a struggle, but uh, and in the beginning, um, you know, I was pretty sick. I mean, I was to the point where I was using a walker to even get to dialysis treatments, and um, you know, my mom stood by me through all this time. Through all this time, she was at the point of retirement, so she kind of came out of retirement to uh, help me out. I I moved in, you know, I left my life of touring in New York and. You know, just living my dreams to um, struggle, you know, with um, dialysis treatments. So um, I, I went through it, and uh, long story short, I'm here, yes, and I'm continuing to do it. And uh, I totally changed my eating habits. A lot of it, uh, uh, my cause was high blood pressure, yeah. and, uh, and, and uh, in our community, I don't need to tell you, no, you don't. what we eat and the things that we just stress about. It has a toll on your body. It takes a toll. And, um, you know, so I had to literally just change my eating habits and just change what I think about on a, on a daily basis and just start thinking more positive. And you can't find a more positive person now than me because uh, God has allowed me to sit here with you eight years later and be able to uh, perform at the Manhattan Club and to be able to uh, release, you know, these songs and be able to continue to do what I do uh, regardless of what I'm going through. So that's my message, and that's my message to anybody. You know. That's excellent, because the bottom line is, you know, if you don't take care of yourself, who can you take care of, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. I agree with you. Well, listen, DeWitt, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I hope that you're back in, in Dallas real soon, because, again, I just really love your story. It's a good one. Thank you. It's I appreciate a good one. it. Thank you. And also, let me just tell the public, if you want to find me, uh, I'm, I'm everywhere. Uh, just reach um, reach out to DeWitt Presents. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Just type in DeWitt Presents, D-W-H-I-T-P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, DeWitt Presents. Excellent, excellent. Now, remember to like us and to subscribe and send us a comment. We're at 410 TV in Dallas, Texas. My name is L.A. Powers, and I wanted to thank you for joining us today.